one more time. time. And one more time it is on CBS as we bring you to the loveliest village on the plains, Auburn, Alabama. 88,000 on hand for the 88th edition of the Iron Bowl. The Home Depot SEC on CBS from Pat Dye Field and Jordan Hare Stadium in Auburn. And the matchup so many times and so many thrills. The Crimson Tide of Alabama and the Tigers of Auburn. the Tigers had hoped for at this point of the season but the fans don't care when Alabama's in town and Hugh Freeze and his quarterback Peyton Thorne will lead him out on the other side Nick Saban the once beaten Crimson Tide and ranked eighth in the country. Let's let's turn them loose. Here come the Tigers. Tuscaloosa. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brad Nestler. My partners are Gary Danielson and Jenny Dell. I think you've done 16 of these. I've done seven. <laughs> Crazy things happen when these two teams get together, man. You bet. And I'm ready for another one. We've seen everything. I'm ready for what we had a couple years ago here. That was good enough. And that was good enough. And it's strange a way that these teams are so alike record-wise. The fact that Alabama's got Georgia in the SEC championship coming up next week. It's all set up. And let's kind of take you back two years ago. Bryce Young. And the Alabama Crimson Tide had all kinds of problems. Yeah, remember how that pass rush affected Bryce Young and then the comeback. And then that last drive, Ness, Bryce Young took it over and got it to overtime. And as you said, we might as well stick around for the fourth overtime. That was the one that did it. And Alabama had to come from behind and survive. So now we head into a new season. And Alabama comes in on a nine game winning streak. I don't know that I've ever seen a guy improve more over the course of a season than Jalen Milrow. Absolutely not. The whole season changed when Jalen Milrow became the centerpiece of this Alabama offense. He earned it the hard way. Remember, after one game, he was benched. But when he got back in there, he got his confidence. He became not only the running offense hub, the passing offense, but his personality. The team kind of looked to him to provide that energy on the field. It's his football team right now. With the way he's playing, how dangerous he is, let's talk about Auburn defensively. What do they have to do? Yeah, I think you can't allow Alabama to have two weapons against you. Yes, Jalen Milrow's good, but Auburn has to stop the run. And to do that, they're going to have to load the box. And I think the key players for Auburn are their two secondary players, the corners. Nehemiah Pritchard, DJ James, two of their best players. They're going to have to go man-to-man, -man, load that box and make it Jalen Milrow and see if he can beat him with a one man show. You know, we think we know the mindset of the coaches because we get a chance to spend time with them on Friday. But coming off a disappointing loss, and I mean disappointing right. in New Mexico State last week, Auburn wasn't supposed to lose that. So, you know, what Hugh Freeze, what's he thinking about? Yeah, I think it started right at the beginning of the week. I think he looked at his team and said, if we're going to beat this Alabama team, we got to believe. You got to believe in yourself, your teammates, believe that this play at home we can win this game if we don't believe who's going to believe and Nick Saban on the other hand nine straight wins they know they've got a date with Georgia and Atlanta next week how about their mindset I think it's back to the process for Nick you've got to respect the game respect your opponent and all the work you go you just can't show up today the process has to be the key funny talking about respect two guys that respect each other coaching against each other with more on that is Jenny well guys we have a new friends giving tradition between the head coaches Nick Saban and 
Hugh Freeze, and it's called the Iron Bowl now. They haven't coached against each other in six years, but they've spent a lot of time together off the field. Now, Nick and his wife, Miss Terry, he has actually hosted Hugh Freeze and his wife, Jill, at their lake house. The coaches enjoy playing golf together. All that quality time has led to a deep-rooted friendship. Now, Freeze said when he was out of the game for two years, it was Coach Saban who was a pillar of support and one of his biggest encouragers. And despite the fact that Saban, he calls Saban the king and the gold standard, there is a hunger here to be Alabama, something Freeze has done twice while at Ole Miss. But, guys, their friendship, it's being put aside today. Boy, for sure, very few people can say that they've ever beaten Nick Saban twice. The weather, the first time they played this game was in 1893. They played it in February. I think we got better weather today, actually. Oh, it's it beautiful. Is. It is perfect. Auburn won the toss, and they want the football. 88th meeting. Alabama with the lead by 12 in games. They've won three straight. And we're set on a beautiful day in Auburn. Will Reichard's got it teed up for the Tide. Brian Batia and Jarquez Hunter are back deep for the Tigers. One more time for the Iron Bowl. Here we go. And they're going to bring it out. You talk about gutsy Brian Batty. And good return out to the 25. And that's where they're going to work. So electing to receive they want the ball first and they want Papa John starting lineup and they want their quarterback to play like he has over the course of the last month. Peyton Thorne the transfer from Michigan State had a nice string of games when they're on a three game winning streak last week not so good but his numbers weren't that bad last week but yeah, the we overall were, play wasn't good when we were here early for the Georgia game everybody had doubts but he's earned the team's respect. Yep. So first down from the twenty four. Fakes it to Hunter. Thorne wanted to sidearm it. Now just kind of shot puts it out there incomplete. Yeah, I think it was Luke Teal was looking and thought Peyton Thorne was going to run at the last second. He got the chest pass or the one handed flip. And as you see it, Luke Teal says, I'll block just as the ball was being delivered. And Deontay Lawson let him have it after that. He's back in the lineup, which is good news for the Alabama linebacking core. Hunter flushes out of the backfield. Thorne comes near side, completes. Tiptoeing out of bounds is Rivaldo Fairweather. And I think and he was out, had his foot out of bounds when he caught it. He is their leading receiver in receptions, yards, and touchdowns. Third and long, Auburn will go fast. They do not want Alabama to substitute. And we got a whistle and a flag. Boy, three mistakes. For Auburn on the first three plays. All start. Offense. Not all 11 players were set prior to the snap. Five yard penalty. Remains third down. First That's play, the quarterback's trying to pitch it. The tight end's trying to block. The next play, you complete a pass. Tight end's standing out of bounds. And then you try to go fast and get a five yard penalty. So now they're really behind the sticks. Third down at 15. And Alabama gets to substitute and bring those two edge rushers in. Empty backfield as Thorns in trouble. Trying to run out of it and he throws at the last second. I think he might have been over the line of scrimmage. It's incomplete. And Luke Deal, the intended receiver. And Terry and Arnold is a guy that's down. Yeah, he was over by a good bit, wasn't he? I thought so, by at least a stride. Edge rushers get in the game, and you know what happened is they called him out of bounds before he threw it. Did he step out of bounds before he threw the ball? Because At any rate, they, not a good opening series, that's for sure. Because they just gave uh, Auburn a five-yard gain on the play. They're going to review this. The ruling of a pass behind the line is under video review. Timeout. Remember, it was third and 15, and now they've got fourth and 10. And Gene Steratore is with us on, I thought he was way over the line. Yes, Gene. by a yard and a half. Yeah, I'm agreeing with both of you guys. Now remember a spot foul from where the ball released with, from the quarterback's hand, five yards from that spot, loss of down. So in essence, probably a nine yard net uh, loss from where we were originally here, guys, right? So uh, that's what they're looking at now. That means Oscar Chapman's going to be putting closer to his own goal line than he would have been. Yeah, it's going to be like, what, 4th and 20, 4th and 19? Is that what you're saying, Gene? 
Yeah, my, my view here, Gary, is it looks like it leaves his hand right about with the right foot at the 20-yard line. So if that back foot would be that the spot of the foul, you'd go from the 20 back to the 15, loss of down. Uh, look to be like about a third and 19, as you said, yeah. Fourth and 19. You lose, lose it down fourth and 19. Right. I would think it would be fourth and 20. Wouldn't you give the five yards from the previous spot of the play? Jason Autry will clear it up for us right here. We think. <laughs> After video review, the passer threw the, pass, the ball beyond the line of scrimmage. Therefore, illegal forward pass, offense number one. The penalty is five yards from the spot of the foul with the loss of down. It'll be fourth down for Auburn from the 15-yard line. Gene had it. So he was one yard across, so five yards from there, fourth and ninth. Either way, a terrible first series for Auburn. Yep. And remember, they won the toss and elected to take the ball. And there's Terry and Arnold going down weirdly on his right elbow and shoulder, defending that pass. So now Caleb Downs, a freshman, back deep as Chapman will punt from near his own goal line. Downs, see if he's going to feel that he's going to get out of the way. Well, that he, turned out well. He for turned. Auburn, those are the ones as a coaching staff. You want your guy back there to catch those. That's a 10 yard loss. Well, remember, Kool Aid McKinstry was pulled from that job last week. Downs was put in there in his stead. And so a little bit of punt return problems for Alabama. 54 yard punt as we take a look at our lineups for Alabama. Brought to you by Papa John's. Starts with Jalen Milrow. Out of Katy, Texas, his third season in Tuscaloosa. And every game he seems to get better and better. But this is his first start here in this atmosphere. First half from the 31. Jace McClellan blasts through a hole and picks up almost 12 on his first carry. So when Alabama made a commitment this year to become more balanced, that offensive line had to grow, and they are growing now, and they're gashing people in the running game. And they're going to a tempo as well. Alabama, no row to the sideline. Burton makes the catch, and he's close to another first down. Here's the rest of the group. We mentioned Jace McClellan closing in on an 800-yard season so far, and Hugh Freeze told us yesterday, it doesn't matter what you do with Jalen Milrow, if you don't stop that guy, you're going to have a long day. I agree with that. So back-to-back -back first downs in Alabama already in Auburn territory. McClellan bounced off his own man and picks up about five against the Auburn defense. Auburn defensively. Marcus Harris on the inside trying to plug holes in there, and he's their leading sack man as well with six on the season. One of the seniors introduced today at Auburn on senior day. I thought J.C. Latham might have had a late hit on that play. See if he gets called. They're discussing it. After the play, personal foul, late hit, run to serve up this offense number 65. 15 yard penalty from the end of the play, it remains second down. Good call, partner. You know who I think saw it first, even before me, at the crowd? <laughs> they reacted, so I started looking around what's going on, but watch. Number 65 at the end of the play, left side engages and then one more hit just outside both hands kind of shoved it so that's the only thing that stopped alabama on this march so far backs them up on their side of midfield and on the end around only about a two-yard gain for kendrick law and now the auburn defense fired up this Auburn defense was kept off balance by New Mexico State last week where they just went slow. Their quarterback ran around. They never really got into the fight. DJ Alabama James. just gave them an opportunity to get in the fight with the penalty. DJ James with a nice tackle and it forces third down and 17. And Auburn has to win third and long. Dupree, the tight end, will set up on the left side as Milrow bobbles the snap a little bit. And now he's getting some heat. Late throw down the middle and got it complete. And still going. 
Malik Benson all the way down to the 21 yard line. So how about that time that Jalen Milrow had to throw? Remember two years ago, seven sacks. Look at that offensive line now. Step up, you give the quarterback that much time. Milrow loves to throw the ball downfield. Well, they don't win on third and long. They give up a 33 yard catch and run. And a first down at the 22. Again, the snap's a little off. Milrow completes to the sideline at about the 11-yard line to Burton. That's another tied first down. I know it's starting to become apparent already, just like that Texas A&M game. Errol Burton's at the guy. They started to go, let's target number three, create a pressure point against this defense, and then see what Auburn adjusts from there. Jermaine Burton, as Gary said, against Texas A&M just... Had an unbelievable performance in that game. And he's already involved here today from the 11 yard line. First down, Alabama. This is Rodell Williams. Williams weaving his way through traffic. And he got down to about the two. It'll be second down and a yard. They can get a first down without getting a touchdown. Sometimes your opponent gives you a chance to stop them. You get a penalty late. You get third and long. I thought it was the key to the game. If you get Alabama in third and long, you can't let them off the mat. They're too powerful when they start making these first downs. And that's what you like to see when you're trying to win ball games. Touchdown on 17 straight drives. They're at the two-yard line with a second down and one. Two tight end set. Roydell Williams is the guy that got him there, and he's got him in the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. We've been watching Alabama play football for three, four years with that finesse passing offense with Bryce Young. Look how different it looks now. They're just loving getting in there, running it inside, double teaming, getting those big massive bodies on you, and producing first downs in that running game. Will Riker will come in for the point after. The all-time leading scorer in the SEC looking to add one more to his resume. And it's up and good. So even when Auburn thought they had Alabama a little bit on the ropes on a third down and long, they gave up a 33-yard completion. And then Milrow with that throw. And Roydale Williams coming in and scores from two yards out. His fourth rushing touchdown of the year. And the Tide leads 7-0. Alabama, the eighth-ranked team in the country, and one of the top kickers in the country is Will Reichard, has just moved into a tie for second on the all-time career points list with Kenneth Dixon, the running back, and only one guy in front of him. And if Will gets nine or ten points today, he'll be the man that everybody will be chasing in that category. Had a great career at Alabama. That's for sure. Auburn brought it out last time, and they're going to bring it out again. That team, oh, whoa, man. flag down, and it's going to be a face mask. And that should give them a first down out around the 20. Kendrick Law, I think, is the guy. Whoa. Man. Oh, man. That hurts way up here. Brian Petit has been mm. basically a return, kickoff return guy, but that one, you're reaching out. I get it. During the you know. turn, illegal block in the back. Return team number 44. The penalty is half the distance from the end of the run. It'll be Wait first down all Wait a second. It's got to be on both sides. They can't miss that, can they? He almost you got his it's helmet gotta around. Be both. Some, this is the problem with replay right here. I mean, okay, I get it. Maybe there's a block in the back, but there for sure is a face a penalty. I mean, Gene Steratore is with us. I mean, this is as blatant as you're ever going to get. Man, that is it, frustrating. It is, guys. And, and you know what you're hoping is one official is looking at the runner, action on the runner. The referee in this case behind the play, he's looking at the block. Okay, Gene, he sees Gene, the block will, in the back. Will they not look up at the scoreboard? They're showing it. Wow. It, it's, a, it's an uncomfortable feeling, Gary, but you can't look up and officiate from the scoreboard. Wow. That's the worst non-call I've yes. seen this year. I mean, we've seen face masks where the hand rubs across the face mask. You can get it, but, you know, you'd have to not understand football not to see this. Wow. 
And Hugh Freeze obviously is thinking the same thing, and so are 88,000 fans in here. But at any rate, that's Auburn at the eight yard line, second down and six. I don't get it. And no gain on that play. Well, and then if you're Auburn right now, you just have to look forward. You're just going to have to forget that. The crowd won't, obviously, but you're just going to have to put your head down and say, we got a bad break. Well, let's try to figure out a way to get a first down. Let's not add to it by making a big mistake right. here ourselves. The people that aren't booing are in total shock. So yes. Some people yes. are noisy and some are just going, are you kidding me? Meanwhile, it's third down and four. Auburn has not been a good third down team this year, around 34 percent. Well, the only thing is, Auburn, you've got to figure the officials are going to give you one here, a close one pretty soon. <laughs> Peyton Thorne looking to throw near his own goal line. Just Too a, far in front of Jarquez yeah. Hunter. When you're throwing to running backs, you've got to put it on them. They just have trouble, you know, with those receiver catches that they make look, make look good. You've got to get it into the body. Open would have had an opportunity to turn up. The ball was was it tipped? I couldn't see it. it. Looked like a spiral all the way. So now Chapman's going to be kicking in his own end zone this time. Yeah, that was an inaccurate ball. So far, this Auburn offense getting a Brad break. I get it, but they've been hurting themselves. Caleb Downs again is on the other end. He didn't catch the last punt. Let's see what he does with this one. This one he fields cleanly at the 49 yard line so great field position and I don't blame the fans here at Jordan Air Stadium and I don't blame Hugh Freeze boy you missed some calls but that's not a call to miss the Alabama a seven nothing lead here in the first quarter take you back to that kick return a couple moments ago and a call that was not made a blatant face mask and then Hugh Freeze went after Chad Green, the headlinesman who did a really good job of ignoring him. Yeah. I got to think that you might have gone after him harder than that, though, with the way you were. Don't you think you oh, really? I'm upset. I just told you <laughs> during the break, I got to get over Settle this. down. Settle down. <laughs> so Alabama, great field position starting in Auburn territory. Nice Just play. McClellan, nice play there. No gain. As Keontae Scott, who's been having a nice season in on the tackle. What you have to do, I really believe those corners for Auburn, you have to get up, take man to man, take some gambles, and get that box. Either whether you're loading in with your safeties or blitzing with your linebackers, you must stop the tailback first. Empty backfield for Jalen Miro on second down and nine. Plenty of time to scan the field. Now running out of time, and he will run with it and get what he can and tiptoe out of bounds. He'll be short of the first down. So nice coverage and there. Here's what happens. Everybody does their job here. Nobody open. And Marcus Harris, number 50, has a shot on him, okay? But he's got a better athlete right there, and he's tough to tackle. Yeah. Another big play. That's what he's been doing the last six, seven games, the defense. And now he makes the third down a manageable one. Third down and three. Alabama converts on half their third downs this year. Also like the way that Alabama's been using Kendrick Law lately, bringing him in. Partial wide receiver, partial running back. He's in the game now. Jermaine Burton in motion. McClellan goes the other way, and he stood up and stopped. Short. Larry Nixon put his head in there and a form tackle for Nixon. Yeah, now that's Auburn middle linebacker football right there. That's what this crowd grew up watching. Tailback runs the ball. The middle linebacker fills and takes it on. And they've been doing that here for 50 years. Right. Tailback being tackled by the middle linebacker like that. And now it's fourth and a long one for Alabama. And they'll go for it. They haven't gone much this year. Only one conversion on two attempts. And they're going. And here comes the guy Gary was talking about. Kendrick Law will take it to the house. Remember when I told you they were going to get a call? They're, they're going to come get right a call here. Right here. It's going to negate a touchdown run of 40 yards. I'm not saying it's not a penalty, but you knew you were going to get one back. I think it was C.J. Dupree, number 81, the tight end, got his man and turned him. Nice call to Law, Law this time. Watch left side. 
Right over to the outside. He turns him in. He's got his hand right there on the inside, and that's the call. Just spun him a bit, but anything close, you know that Auburn was going to get one back. Okay, now I can breathe easier. There you go. <laughs> well, it negates a 40-yard touchdown. That would have made it a two-score game already, and instead... Alabama's got a punt. You know, so, you know, everybody preaches 60 minutes, 60 minutes. But when you take the ball, you have to survive early. You can't be making mistakes early when you take the football like Auburn. And it was close to being over early. James Brunett. The oh, punter off the side of his foot. It. Yes, he did. It goes out around. They're going to run it up. But somebody caught it over there on the sideline at about the 25. It, unfortunately, oh, it was go farther. somebody that wasn't in the game. All right. Well, that's going to give Auburn good field position. Midway, first quarter. The flyover or earlier, and Aria making her flight her final time on CBS. And elected to receive, and this was their opening three plays, Garrett. Yeah, everybody jacked up, ready to go. They take the ball, and boy, 0 for 3. Mistakes all around. They get a penalty. Illegal procedure, and then the quarterback goes across the line of scrimmage. It led to a touchdown, but the next mistake by everybody, officials included, did not. So now you got field position. Let's see if this Auburn offense can get some running help for the offense. That would be Quez Hunter. There it is. And he's going to go for more than 10. That's what they needed to get going. Terry on Arnold, who was shaking up earlier, made the tackle. I really believe that this Auburn passing offense is not good enough without help from that tailback. Last week against New Mexico State, he only had eight touches for 27 yards. I think he needs 18 touches in this game. He had two touchdowns last year against Alabama, one on the ground and one in the air. And here he goes again, Jarquez Hunter. Blockers in front, he's got it all the way to the 15-yard line. Dallas Turner saved a touchdown. He did, but it'll go quick. Auburn will go fast now. That's Hugh Freeze's trademark. Good job inside out. Good block that time by Luke Deal coming across. 42-yard pickup. And Auburn in the red zone. Damari Alston will give Jacquez Hunter a breather after that long run. And he'll get the carry. And he's got a big game. Eight or nine before Jalen Key makes a stop. Again, keep that Alabama defense on the field. Go fast. And they will on second down and a long yard. And now it's going to be first and goal. Auburn trying to tie things up. Here with five and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Again, Alabama cannot get in their goal line defense. The same players that were running the last four plays are in there, and they got to be winded. Just inside the four-yard line, first and goal. Two tight ends in for the Tigers. A little confusion on who goes where. Now they're set. And it's Alston in the backfield with the ball plowing ahead and into the end zone touchdown tigers the running game the tailback running game the staple basically of auburn football if you really want to be honest and that's what led to that football drive they needed it and that offensive line and those tailbacks made it happen. How fast from 14 nothing to 7 7 did Boy, that happen? I guess. Alex McPherson in for the point after to try to tie things up at the five minute mark. Taking a peek. Oh, I think he was across before his knees went down. I do too. At least they're looking at it, and we'll get one more look here as he dives, balls across. They're going to count it. 
And McPherson in for the point after. Ten minutes into the game, a tie game. I would say Hugh Freeze is going to look be in a better mood <laughs> as the last time we saw him. Five plays, all runs to cover 68 yards and a Tiger touchdown. When you order Domino's online, we'll give you a free pizza to use for a future pizza emergency. So you'll have an emergency pizza. A free pizza when you need it most. Here you go. Thank you. Only at Domino's. When disaster strikes, what matters most is getting you back on your feet. And you deserve a company that knows what matters. Belfour, restoring more than property. Tie game, and now it's time for Do Project Smarter. And today we celebrate the Home Depot CBS Sports Partnership in the SEC. From the plains of Auburn, the swamp will be filled to capacity. Sanford Stadium between the hedges. We welcome you to the Home Depot. The Home Depot SEC on CBS. It's a perfect day for football. For nearly a quarter of a century, the Home Depot and CBS proudly delivered the SEC to a national TV audience. We danced on Rocky Top, swayed with the 12th man, and survived a sandstorm. We watched the tide roll, the swamp rise, and soared to new heights with an answered prayer. Davis gets a block. Touchdown. There were dogs and cats and tigers too, but most of all, there are the cherished memories. Great players who struck a chord in our hearts and the coaches whose actions spoke louder than words. Oh, the enduring images that brought us smiles and tears. So for all those doers who joined us on Saturday afternoons, we celebrate 24 years together with this simple, heartfelt message. Thank you. And thank you, Home Depot. All the faces, the places, the coaches, the players, the wins, the losses, highs and lows. We've seen it all, man. And sure on top of that, the fans who watched every week. Absolutely. And that's really the key to me to this conference. The fans demand excellence from everybody involved. You and I are included in that. Coaches, the players, the coordinators. Everybody. You got to show up and you got to produce. We'll miss Aria and we'll miss Uga and all the mascots as well and the bands and the pageantry of the SEC. Well, Gary said the ground game's got to get going. Here we go. And let's again look at that run inside. Good double team. Good job by Stutz, number 64, helping on the nose and going to the linebacker. That cut it up. Downfield blocking on a big run. And then the Hugh Freeze. Go fast, go fast, go fast. Bring in the backup tailback and tie this game up. First two drives, nothing. Last drive, five plays, all runs. 68 yards and a touchdown. So now Jalen Milrow and company come out. They thought they were going to have a 14 to nothing lead before it, that holding penalty. It, it looks like uh, Auburn was offsides on the kickoff, so they added it to the touchback. So they'll work from the 30. Five minutes to go, first quarter. Milrow again. A lot of time and running out of it now and throws on the run and he threw a strike. Wow. And he got it to Isaiah Bond. So early again, no it open. Handled expertly by the secondary, but Milrow breaks the pocket and all of a sudden somebody pops open. It didn't look, the timing didn't look right on this one. It looked like McLaughlin snapped it before everybody else was ready. They've had some snap problems this year, I can guarantee you that. Well, at least that one was accurate. Not that Jalen was ready for it, but he's ready for that one. And he's got it to Burton. Oh, nice move by Burton for an extra five yards. It's going to be almost impossible to play off of Burton and play man-to-man. -man. He's just too crafty. You give him 10 yards cushion, that's just way too easy. Yeah. I don't know how much Auburn feels comfortable getting up and playing bump and run, but 
I don't know if that's going to work. But Jermaine Burton's been a big part of this first quarter. Jalen Hale in the lineup now as a wide receiver on a first down for the tide. Rodell Williams in the backfield with Milrow. Somebody's going to have to go in motion, aren't they, from that right side? <laughs> that formation looks different. Well, it's overloaded, that's for sure. I guess. Dupree stays over there, and they run that way. Yeah, Nick Saban took a timeout. I think your instincts were right. That didn't look right, and called down. I think Tommy Reese signaled down to Nick Saban, go, we've got it wrong, coach. 338 remaining first quarter. We'll take the timeout with him, or even at Auburn. Stay in the know with CBS Sports HQ, the 24-7 free network that brings you the latest news, picks, scores, and highlights from all the sports you love. Watch CBS Sports HQ anytime, anywhere, all the time. And you can catch Gary with the HQ team when we're done here today. <laughs> Alabama from the Auburn 36. Play fake and a short throw. And a pickup of three or four for Kendrick Law. It's amazing how much he's become more and more involved as the season's gone yeah, along. That, that Debo Samuel spot. Yep. The stuff that Jalen Milrow has done. You take away Jaden Daniels. Amazing. And, and you go, well, these two, two guys are. Yeah, I, but I mean, Jaden Daniels, we knew what he was coming right. into this year. This exactly. has been the surprise of the conference. Well, maybe Missouri and Cody Schrader yeah. might be the surprise. Yeah, but that's a good one, too. Already 130 yards of offense for the Tide. Oh, nice read. On second and seven, stretching it out and fighting for that first down. Not quite there, though, for Jam Miller. It's going to bring up third down and short. Yeah, I think that, you know, it was a positive play, but I think for this Auburn defense, when you can stretch it out like that, he doesn't get a chance to turn up. you got to take that. So Alabama's already used three of their tailbacks. And they got a third and one coming up. Miller stays in there with Milrow, and he'll get the carry, and he'll get the first down. Not by much, but he got it. Austin Keys made the hit. When you talk to the Auburn coaches about the Alabama offense and Jaden Milrow, he says that one of the keys that got him going is they don't read as much as they used to. Not as right. many reads on the running game. Allowing it's either called a give or a keep, taking some of the pressure off the quarterback and making decisions. First down at the 25. The RPO, Milrow backpedals, and now he's just going to throw, <laughs> throw it over the Auburn side. I don't know if he got that across the line of scrimmage. I don't think he did. But remember, that line passes all the way out. It doesn't stop at the out-of-bounds line. It continues to go into infinity. So maybe it would have kept going. The, the, box, and the ball went beyond the line of scrimmage extended. Therefore, it's an there incomplete it is. pass. Second down. So even though it didn't pass in the field, that line keeps going. See, it was stopped by an Auburn player. The ball would have kept going. <laughs> he gets the benefit of the doubt. Jalen Milrow, 7 out of 8 for 94 yards so far. <laughs> Isaiah Bond in motion. They'll keep it on the ground. Jace McClellan inside the 20 to the 18. This Alabama offensive line, we talk about all the growth at all the different positions. The Alabama line, when we talked to Nick Saban, I said, Coach, what part of the offensive line has come out, part of your team has come on the most? And he goes, I got to say our offensive line. Yeah. They've got a freshman left tackle that they've been worrying about, but he's growing up and he's not really a freshman anymore. Third and three, all day for Milro in the Alabama backfield. Now he'll take off, and he's got the first down and slides down around the 12. So we were talking about Caden Proctor, but watch him now at left tackle. Again, early in the year, struggling, true freshman. Watch him on this play. Starting to get the hang of it, isn't he? Yep. Big time recruit plays early, plays left tackle, and pushes his man right around. And that gave Jalen Nero an open field in front of him to pick up the first down easily. At the 13 yard line. Yeah. 
They'll run it here. McClellan, a little high step and, and a stiff nice. arm. That is really nice. That play was designed to go to the right side of the offensive line. McClellan just uses his eyes, patience. You know, you got to go slow to that hole, and then you go. Then you go. You just patient, patient, and then you go, and he did. We got it down inside the nine-yard line. We're at second down at five, and we'll switch ends as we played 15. First quarter of the 88th Iron Bowl. Little Iron Man music to cap us off. Quarter number one, seven, seven. We're set to start the second quarter, and Jenny talked to Nick Saban moments ago. Coach, how do you shut down their run game? Well, you know, we just misfit two runs in a row, and they were both big plays, so we got to do a better job. Backer didn't get over the top on either one of them. But, you know, I mean, the penalty on the touchdown changed the momentum of the game. Uh, didn't need a good punt. So, you know, we just got to keep playing the next play and keep playing for 60 minutes. Thank you, Coach. Yeah, thank you. Here's the next play, and it's Jalen Milrow, and he's going to lose about a yard and a half. Yeah, that was taken on really well that time for that Auburn defense. They defeated those blocks. They kept one arm to the outside open. Watch them take it on with their inside arm and bounce it out. Beautiful job inside out by that defense that time. And now third and long. Alabama can get a first down around the three-yard line. Third down and eight. Milrow. He's going to run with it. No, he's not. Touchdown. Throw. Now he's crossed. Well, at least he's going to be called as being across the line. It's Nye Black in the end zone. Now let's see if any part of his body was behind the line of scrimmage because it was called. Oh, he's uh, well we past the line. Passed, passed, yep, by like two yards. That's the second time we've had one of those, one for each team. Here's the call. You'd have to have a big body to be behind that one. <laughs> Illegal forward pass, offense number four. The penalty is five yards from the final foul, the loss down. So that takes away the touchdown. Yeah, and as Gene taught us earlier, it's a spot of the foul to be five yards right from where he released the ball. It's going to make it a little longer kick. For Will Riker. So twice Alabama's been in the end zone. One called back by a holding call. That one illegal I, forward pass. And I, now thought he made, I thought he would have made a first down running. Didn't I, you? That's why I thought he yep. was going to run. Yep. Will Riker for the field goal. And it's good from 32 yards away. So Alabama regains the lead. Will Record continues to add to his point total in Alabama. And wait a minute, we got a flag. They're going to decline it. It looks like it was on Auburn. Offside, Offside. Defense, defense number 34. The penalty's declined. The field goal is good. Timeout. So Alabama adds to its lead here early in the second quarter on a field goal to stretch it out to 10-7. Thriller there at the big house and here in the Iron Bowl Alabama with a 10 7 lead and so that's going to shake up the college football rankings a little bit as we head into next week with championship week coming up. Here's what it looked like coming in to today. Georgia plays Georgia Tech at 730 Eastern tonight. Ohio State's going to fall out of the number two spot and Michigan will move up but then we'll have to wait and see about the other situations with Ohio State joining the one loss group. You did that so well I don't even have to watch Tuesday night to find out what really got. <laughs> <laughs> it'll still get all. Oh yeah. Out. Oh yeah. yeah. It'll, it'll get worked out. First down for Auburn. Jarquez Hunter trying to get to the edge. Only got about two yards. And Terry and Arnold made the stop along with Deontay Lawson. Auburn's running game got him their touchdown, though. It sure did. I mean, they still have not completed a pass in this game, and they had to turn to the running game to make it happen. 
finally they popped one. They stuck with it enough, pop one, and that was the big play they needed that produced the touchdown. And again, as Gary said, Peyton Thorne, no passing yards yet. Going to try to throw on the run going to his left, and that was an errant throw. Not even close. Had the blitz coming, he knew it was coming from the opposite side. Jalen Key was coming, and he good call to get him on the run by offensive coordinator that time. I don't know if Hugh Freeze is or Philip Montgomery is, but whoever called it was a good call. And the possessions, two punts and then the touchdown with five plays all on the ground. Two tight ends, two wide receivers in the lineup right now for Auburn. They do not have a big play wide receiver for the most part, and the guys that started when we saw them earlier in the year against Georgia are not the starters pretty. anymore, but that's a nice catch. That was pretty. That was way out in front of Caleb Barton and he snagged that baby for well, this first is down. a play designed because they know that Alabama loves to run combo so they have two guys go out and then pick for the outside guy comes right inside we talked to Hugh Freeze he said I've got some pass routes that will give this Nick defense problems it's only the 11th catch by Barton but it was a dandy pick picked up 16 yards they needed that one big run one big pass now They fake it to Hunter. Peyton Thorne's going to run this all the way. He's got good wheels, and he'll go out of bounds after about a five-yard gain. That's the exact play that Peyton went, what, 80 yards against Georgia to yeah. start the game? That's a little bit of the confidence that this Auburn team, despite what happened last week, they go, hey, we looked around. We played, you know, Georgia as good as anybody. We know Alabama's good, but we know Georgia's good. Yeah. They hung with them. We can hang with these guys. Second down and six. They stay with a two tight end off offense. Yeah, they've got to get out of it. They're going to have to take a timeout. Well, they had a man in motion, and the snap should have come while he was still moving, and that didn't work out either. So Auburn takes his first timeout. They trail the tie by three. Dollars this year, the goal two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's awesome. How about that? You notice Coach Pearl's stack was pretty high, but those things looked a little ratty, man. They were <laughs> kind of torn up. I don't know about his cooking prowess. Second down and six from the forty-six. Jarquez Hunter nowhere to hide this time. Got back to the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard out of it at the very end. Yeah, this Alabama defense, I'm not saying it's easy to run on them. I mean, they, they do a good job. Coach Saban told Jenny, one linebacker bust, that was the key to that long run. But you can't give up on it if you're Auburn. They're just not a good enough passing team to get throwing into a passing game with this Auburn defense. See if they can pick up five here. They're one out of three on their third down conversions. Well, they keep it on the ground. It's going to be an empty backfield. So unless it's Peyton Thorne running, it will be a pass. The slant, and it's first down. Good catch. Well, it's close to a first down. I don't know if they did. He get it. Jamarius Johnson, the guy that caught it. Yep. Nice. Oh, yeah, he fell across. Beautiful. Malachi Moore was right there to make the stop. As soon as the ball arrived, but they moved the chains. The 11 minute mark. From the 48 of Alabama, Jarquez Hunter, a little stutter step. Now he turns it up. Good run. In a seesaw season for Auburn. They're six and five coming into this one. Started three and oh, they lost their next four. And they won three straight and everything seemed to be going good. Yeah. And then they paid New Mexico State one point eight million dollars to come in here and got clobbered on their home field. You talk about looking ahead, huh? Oh boy. Knowing the Iron Bowl was today. Hunter. Another first down. <laughs> and oh, team that's still pushing. Right. I heard the whistle, but he was past the line when I heard it. 
Yahad Campbell will give him credit for the tackle, I guess. There was, there was about 10 guys there. I don't know how you sort that one out. Following up, you know, nice block inside out by Britain, number 50. Three, I think it might have been Stutt 62, but that was that exemplifies the Iron Bowl right yep, there. Absolutely, about ten guys shoving each other. Damari Olson will come in and give Jarquez a breather, and he gets oh. the carry and a loss. Dallas Turner, all over that. So last time, Justin Aborjbi was out there playing defensive end, it, and they got around him. This time, the quicker Turner is in that spot, and you don't get around Turner. No. One of the finalists for the lot trophy. Dallas Turner. Long line of great outside edge type linebackers like Will Anderson. Who's already a star in Houston in the NFL. How quiet has it been for McKinstry and Argo? They really haven't had to do anything no. in the game. Uh -oh. And Thorne's going down. Turner's in the mix again, and so is Aboigby. Aboigby comes around one end, and Dallas Turner cleans it up. Aboigby with that power rush from the right side of the quarterback. Watch him just overrun and get inside a nice twist and just cleans it up. Actually, inside out, it was Damon Payne that really caused the quarterback problems, wasn't it? That's Justin's sixth sack of the year from the inside. And that's third down at 20. This one, Auburn thought they had something working. Dallas Turner and Justin Boydby with big plays defensively for the tide. They'll play it safe, keep it on the ground, and maybe get three yards out of this. But to bring up fourth down at about 17. Yeah, those, that's one of those ones where you're just going to concede and try to pump the ball down there. Peyton Thorne and his head coach having conversation. Caleb Downs will backpedal down around the 10-yard line awaiting Oscar Chapman's punt. Downs took one for a touchdown last week. And he lets this one go. Oh, and it's inside the one. Talking about being in the right seat at the right time. Jalen Simpson <laughs> right in the corner by the pylon. He lines up two yards inside the sideline, and the ball bounces right at him. You remember that 71-yarder that Oscar Chapman hit against Georgia <laughs> yep, earlier this year? Yep. Had the same kind of look to look it. Look at that. And on the hop. And the there. big hop, the comfortable hop. 44 yards down to about the one-foot line. <laughs> so the Tide will have the ball, but they're deep, deep, deep in their own territory when we come back. Just a nice little chip shot, 44 <laughs> yards. Alabama all stacked up there at their own one yard line. Milrow under center will try to just get it out a little bit farther, and it's not much. Probably about a yard out to the two. And that great punt we saw, Oscar Chapman, this is his little wedge shot, and dropped it down at the one yard line. And Dottie Pepper would enjoy that. She hit a lot of those. Getting ready. Our golf analyst, her husband, David Wither, here at Jordan Hare. You know, when I think back, remember that kick six game? I think back to the 99-yard touchdown pass. A.J. McCarron threw to Mari Cooper on this play right here. Amari Cooper went all the way down. A lot of things happened in that game 10 years ago. <laughs> I guess. Milrow in the gun. Jace McClellan gets the call. A little stutter step. Whoa! Cartwheels out. And held onto the ball somehow around the five-yard line. Well, the guy who downed the ball, downed the ball carrier on that one. Jalen Simpson, great hit. Should go to him. The ball bounced to him. Now he bounced the ball carrier. Oof, right on his head. And now it's going to get a little bit noisy in here. Third down and six. Auburn, from the five. Auburn has not been spying Jalen Milrow. He's been hurting him coming out of the pocket for this Auburn defense. Will they go to any spy? Milrow in his own end zone has to get rid of it in a hurry and does and got it out complete but it's not going to be a first down oh maybe it is no I don't think oh look at the spot though short. 
I thought for sure on that one, Night Black would turn up and make the first down, but he paused just for a second. I thought ball was behind him. I thought he just would have run right over that defender. Now watch the spot come out. Oh, they're moving the chains. That's what I'm telling you. I know. Look over the linesman and you can tell. I think this, they're going to review this they, thing. They'll have to, right? Yep. Well. Well, maybe not. Jalen McLeod is a guy that was shaken up on the play. And he was involved in the tackle. Well, I think if you're right now, if you're. Five, four, eight. I think if you're Hugh Freeze, you're asking, is this going to be reviewed? Because if not, I have to challenge this. Change territory is with us as well. I thought he was a half yard shot. I don't think the ball got to the 11 yard line. Yeah. Ruling in a first down is under video review. Timeout. All right. Well, that's all we needed to take a look at it. Again, it looks to us that he's a little bit shy. And Gene, what do you think? The part I'm looking at, fellas, is the tight end's lower legs, whether his shin, knees, or anything are down on the ground. The angles that I've looked at appear to me that the tight end is laying on top of an Auburn player's body, so he's really not down by contact until he's reaching for that line to gain. And from one angle that I have, and again, I'm working off of the yellow line, uh, it appears that the front nose of that football may have just touched the 11-yard line. As we watch here, you can see him reversing out as he's falling. No lower body part below the knee or leg is hitting the ground. He's laying on the Auburn player. Then the left elbow hits. On the field stands, the runner made the 11-yard line. I, I didn't get a definitive look at it for me. I didn't see anything definitive. I would just say it stands because they don't have. Where's the football? Well, as Gene said, if he, the call is going to be that he touched the line, you got to go with it. So it's a first down at the 11. Remember, they had to work from their own one yard line after that punt was down. So now they have some room to work. That's a, a huge first down. Jace McClellan in the backfield with Milrow. Gets the carry and powers his way out. Good run. About seven more yards for McClellan. Part of that credit for that power has been the change in the playing time for Jaden Roberts, number 77 at right guard. He has been a load over at that position, the right guard position. Alabama going a little tempo here. Quick snap, Milrow in trouble. Got away somehow. And this is what he does, Jalen Milrow. First down and out of the 25. Well, Elijah McAllister, we thought up here that he had him. McAllister's turning around and saying, I, did I not get held on that play? Whatever, as Ness called it, if you don't get your arms around Jalen Milrow, he's going to get away. Just got one hand and then a second slippery hand. And a first down again. Three wideouts here. Alabama hasn't gone deep yet, and the running game's been working, so they're going to keep working it. Well, it was Caden Proctor, number 74, that has it at the top of the screen up here. Do you see a hold? He has his hands, what they call, inside his body. You can hold inside your body. They will allow that. It's when it gets outside of your shoulder pads of the offensive tackle. So they did not make the call. Meanwhile, second down and four. Rodell Williams checks in with the Alabama backfield. Milrow pumps one way, comes back to the middle, and uh, was it trapped by Isaiah Bond? It was incomplete. A lot of close plays so far in this game, isn't there? Not kidding. That one was not. You see the turf come up before he gathered it. Alabama four for six on third down. This one's third and four. Next. 
actually almost five on third down. Monroe, far sideline, knocked away beautifully over there on the corner by Nehemiah Pritchett. One of the guys Gary said in the open has to play well, and that's as good as you can play it. Well, that time Ray Ron Roberts, defensive coordinator, did have a spy on. Right here is the spy player. He takes the block away from Tyler Booker, the left guard, but he's ready for the run. Good job on the long throw. Pritchard comes through. The two corners have to be a factor in this game. So that'll force a James Burnett punt. And Keontae Scott back in punt return formation, averaging almost 17 a return. If he can get his hands on one. And he has to take it on a hop and drops down to the 25 and there's a flag. Well, we both see a lot of special teams. Usually it's a push in the back yep. right here, right? Yep. During the kick, illegal block in the back. Return team number five. Ten yard penalty from the end of the kick. It'll be first down Auburn. Timeout. So with a little over three and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Auburn's got it back down 10 7. At halftime. And right now we got a chance to test your knowledge with today's Athlac trivia question Who coined the phrase Iron Bowl? I shouldn't give you a hint. It goes back to the 1960s. You knew it. I did. You did your study. <laughs> right now, of course, for Auburn right now, remember, they took the ball. They, you always want to score, but you got to get out of the half now. You don't want to give Alabama the ball to finish this half and get the ball to start the second half. That worked from the 12-yard line. Let's keep it on the ground. Damari Alston, nice run for about nine. Watch Cam Stutz, right guard, come across and take on Turner right here. Comes across, Turner takes him on, but then just squeeze it out. Again, Luke Deal does a good job on the linebacker. Good, positive, first down play. Brings the second down and short. From the 20. Alston, he's got a first down and a big opening. All the way down to the 20 yard line and 15 more or half the distance to the goal because of the face mask. Jamari Alston a big run earlier and this one's a blast for 56 yards. Oh good job. Fairweather that time tight end does a good job turning out and then watch the end of the play. Personal foul face mask defense number six. And it's ironic that it's a face mask. Yeah, it wasn't as bad as the first one we saw, but they, at least they got this one right. Boy, you're thinking, can I just get out of the half? And now you're down on the 12-yard line. 56 yards plus 15 equals 12. Yep, plenty of time now. Let that clock run. If you score, you want to do it with very little time on the clock. Austin stays in there. He and Jarquez Hunter has been, have been the offense for Auburn. Now they're going to run it end around. Convoy in front of Javarius Johnson. Touchdown. I'll tell you, Luke Teal, number 86, is having himself a first half. Watch him come around on this play. Pitching it out, getting outside, finishes off the play, gets help from Wade, number 52, and they go into the end zone. And from our pylon cam, there's the landing and the touchdown for Johnson. A point after. McPherson is up and good. I knew that we wanted Auburn, I did, to run the ball, but on both scoring drives. 
not one pass. Five plays for a touchdown, now three plays for a touchdown. No passing yards. Capping an 88-yard drive in just three plays. Touchdown, Tigers. Named after, came up with that in 1964. Somebody said, Coach, what about bowl games this year? See, we've got our own bowl game in Birmingham. We have it every year. It's the Iron Bowl. And now Jordan Hare Stadium lit up with their Tigers up by four. From the 19-yard line. I'd like the motion man. It's Jace McClellan on the carry. And good run by Jace. About five yards before Auburn can drag him down. Justin Rogers finally did as we're approaching two minutes. And again, Alabama will go without a huddle. No row. Short across the middle. Good enough for the first down to McClellan. And they'll move the sticks. Just under two minutes, so it'll stop till they set the chains, and then they'll start it. Patience early in a two-minute drive. Two timeouts. Be patient early. We haven't seen Jalen Milrow air one out yet today, Gary. Now he does. And he's got Jermaine Burton. Burton, touchdown, Alabama. I don't, did he... And the only question I have is what was going on on defense and did he step out of bounds? 68 yards on the touchdown reception for Jermaine Burton. Because nobody covered him. DJ James lets run right by him. Watch this down here. Let's Jermaine Burton run right by him. No safety deep. Just lets him go as if he thought he had help. What an answer for Alabama. Well, that quieted the crowd. Sure Will Reichert did. in for the point after. They try to put Alabama back up in front by a field goal, and he does with the extra point is good. So you go it in three plays, I'll match you. We'll do it in three plays. Three plays, 81 yards, the biggest chunk to number three. 68 yards for the touchdown. <laughs> His longest touchdown catch of the year in his sixth, make that seventh touchdown catch good for 68 yards in the score. Auburn, we've had more return kicks today than we've had all year. And out across the 20 to the 21 is Brian Betty. Don't forget, coming up, Geico Halftime Report. Adam Rick and BJ will have the day's best highlights, including the game, and it was a thriller in Ann Arbor, and the ramifications on the college football playoff picture. Here's another look at the touchdown. Well, Brad, you said they hadn't gone deep yet, but going deep and then making the mistake right here, both of these players have their eye on the quarterback, Jalen Milrow. Neither one of them take the deep third. I mean, sometimes you bust as a linebacker on a running play, but when you bust as a safety or a corner, when you have deep third, they change the scoreboard. Look at those two last drives. Hadn't taken us two minutes to get points in both directions. And that's Jarquez Hunter. Good game again for Jarquez. Auburn trying to go in a hurry here. They only have two timeouts left and 110 to go in the half. Thorne double clutches now goes deep middle. Drops it. My goodness. Fairweather. That was a fair weather drop. I mean, this is the tight end, and this is another busted coverage on the field. Caleb Downs this time lets the tight end get into the middle of the field and Right through his hands. That's the definition of a drop right there. He's their leading receiver. That gets you into field goal range, too. Field goal range a long ways away now. Third down and four. Worry about the first down for now. Peyton Thorne. And it's uh, be a timeout by Alabama. They'll get the ball back. Deontay Lawson got in there. Had missed some time in the last couple of weeks, but a sack on this one 
the second down pass could have been a big play. Come back on third down, and Lawson with got blocked, but kept his wit about him, stuck out his hand, and made the tackle. His third sack of the season, and a timeout. 17-14 Alabama, just under a minute to go in the first half. And Alabama's going to get the ball get back. Chapman will have to punt. Caleb Downs waits on it for Alabama. Downs waits on it. And oh, nice play. Nice play and holding on. Big special teams play there. Anthony with the tackle. Really good punt. The gutter gets down there, times it out, and he won't let go. <laughs> Tomorrow, it's an NFL on CBS doubleheader. Early games include an NFC North showdown between the Steelers and the Bengals. That should be an AFC North showdown, excuse me. Jaguars take on the Texans. Later, it's an outstanding one. Philly and the Bills get together. It all starts at noon Eastern with the NFL today. Tomorrow, NFL's on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Tight end, four wide receivers in the game. Alabama gets the second half kickoff. Don't forget, they just regained the lead on that long touchdown. Milrow in trouble. Gets away momentarily and now throws it away. Austin Keys was giving chase. The last 11 Iron Bowls. And Auburn a 3-2 lead and a plus three scoring margin. Amazing. There's a Bo Nix sighting right there, the different uniform. <laughs> <laughs> We're so happy for Bo. He's a great guy. Who knows, maybe win the Heisman. But he did his time here before heading out west. And they're happy to have him with Oregon's Ducks. They'll keep it on the ground this time. Jan Miller. He got it to the 30. Uh, it's Brodell Williams, beg your pardon. Quick timeout here. We'll be back in 30 seconds. You are not related. There's no ancestry connecting you. But look how similar you are. You work at it. You keep going. You may not be brothers and sisters, but if tough were a gene, you would be. CBS Tuesday head down under for NCIS Sydney. These two teams of highly trained misfits will come together to defuse naval crimes in the most contested patch of ocean on the planet. NCIS Sydney, new series, Tuesday, 8, 7 Central on CBS. Third down at 5 for Alabama. Need about 37 yards for a 50-yarder. Isaiah Bond in motion across the field for the Tide. Galen Milrow again running for his life and gets what he can. He's knocked out of bounds right behind Nick Saban. Nice sidestep by Coach Saban there. Yeah, and this time uh, the safeties were in the right spot and everybody had their coverage responsibilities. Don't let anybody get behind you, number one, and then make Jalen Milrow find somebody. So fourth down and two. Yeah, they're, they got to punt this. They're not going to try for this. So Chapman, I beg your pardon, Burnup will come out. Two punts so far. One was a bad one. And Keontae Scott waits back for the Tigers around the 25-yard line. Delay a game. They just... It's like the back judge finally saw it. I thought it was like two seconds after it was came through. Team. Five yard penalty means fourth down. I don't think they're going to mind that because that one came off the side of Burnup's foot again. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't looking that pretty. <laughs> he knows it too. So he'll get another chance from a little farther back.
release point off that right foot will be around the 20 yard line this time. One's better. Fair catch taken around the 30 yard line by Scott. 17 seconds for Auburn. And two timeouts. Trailing by three points as we take a look at Dr. Pepper SEC standings. Alabama's already clinched the West, trying to go to 11 and 1 and 8 and 0 in conference play with a date uh, with the Georgia Bulldogs next Saturday. The Dogs and the Tide again. We'll have it at it one more time for the SEC championship. Yeah, and, and Alabama, even if they win, like, they need this game badly because even if they beat Georgia with two losses, yep. they would be in real trouble. Yep. Especially with that Texas team looming right there. And Texas having been the only blemish on Coach Saban's Tide's record this year. So Peyton Thorne is going to run it here. And gets a great gain. It's going to look good in the stats unless he gets hurt down there. Take a timeout. They've got two. He got did. it almost to midfield. Alex McPherson's career long is 53 yards field goal wise. So still 11 seconds to go. One more timeout left for the Tigers. Yep, you can throw the ball anywhere on the field and then decide whether you want to go field goal or if you're close enough or you get one Hail Mary. That was a 19 yard gallop for Peyton Thorne. As I'm sure all of you know, a transfer came in from Michigan State. He said to us yesterday, we're talking about, what do, you, what do you think of the SEC? And he said, well, I thought I was in the best division in the best conference in the country in the Big Ten East. And then I found out what the SEC West was about. I know. <laughs> well, he played two good ones. Put up some good numbers at Michigan State before transferring here. Cadillac Williams back there putting in his instincts that he's been around here forever right yep did a great job as a head coach at room head coach so there you see the target line and what they need here to try to give McPherson a shot at a field goal five receiver group for Peyton Thorne he can't take a sack that's the one thing you don't want to do and he knows that and he throws it away to save the down so now this one's going to have to be a quick out or something yeah real quick you could throw a slant because you could take a timeout. You could throw anything, but it's got to be quick. Yep. Everybody getting back set behind the line. Second down and 10 doesn't matter, but where the pass is going does. Thorne. Deep middle incomplete, and that will do it for the half, I think. Well, we have the ability to put one second on the clock. I don't know if you're aware of that. <laughs> it's too soon. It's 10 years. <laughs> uh, one second remaining. Oh, there is one second. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Might as well use it. Every 10 years, you're allowed to put one second right. on the clock. And sometimes it works out for you. Yep. And sometimes it doesn't. Correct. This time you got to throw it into the end zone, right? Yeah. Unless they've got a hook and ladder play or something like that, we're going to see Peyton Thorne's arm if he doesn't get Good. sacked. And that might be the case. So he's going to let it fly. Down at the goal line, intercepted right at the goal line by Terry and Arnold. So he got it there, but there was only a Crimson Tide player as it landed and he got peppered as he let go of that ball too that was a pretty impressive throw it was he was getting hit so it's going to be alabama by three at halftime and another look oh man he got he good. took a big shot yes, he and did terry and arnold sort of took that away from Jalen Key who was waiting on it. Coach Freeze is with Jenny. All right, Coach, your team had a choice to respond in this one. What did you learn about the identity of your guys here in the first half? Well, I love the way they're playing hard. They're just not playing real smart sometimes. We blew a coverage there up 14-10. Our crowd's in it. That's a big momentum. If we could get in the halftime 14-10, 
Hey, we blew that coverage, but we're running the football well, and um, hopefully we can get a stop coming out of half, but I'm proud of our kids and, and coaches and love our crowd here. Thank you, Coach. Thank you so much. So yeah. they'll head into the locker room, try to make some adjustments, and here's the last play of the game, the it's last play of the half. Both sides. Oh, oh man. Dallas Turner and Braswell with a Peyton sandwich. End of the half, 17-14 Alabama. We'll send you to Adam Zucker in our New York studios now for the Geico Halftime Report. All right, next. Halftime Alabama leading 17-14. And now a taste of tradition presented by Sonic. For that, we take you back to the 2013 Iron Bowl. Ten years ago, it was determined there was one second still left on the clock. Remember that? That's why we were kidding around about the one second a moment ago. And after that call, the rest is history. 56-yarder does not have the leg. Chris Davis takes it to the back of the end zone. He'll run it out to the 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Oh, my God! Davis is going to run it all the way back! Touchdown, Auburn! An answered prayer! At the end of the first quarter, the Jordan-Hare crowd welcomed home the members from that team. And Tigers fans will never forget the kick six. Chris Davis that took it the distance. And by the way... Alabama will receive the second half kickoff when we come back. The Home Depot SEC on CBS heads into quarter number three at Jordan-Hare Stadium in the 88th Iron Bowl between the Tide and the Tigers. And Alabama with a lead 17 to 14. Roydell Williams and Kendrick Law await Alex McPherson's Opening third quarter kickoff. And Alabama will bring it out to the 25 yard line to start the third quarter with a three point lead. We welcome you back to the booth. Brad Nestler, Gary Danielson. We got Clint, we got Tim, we got George, we got David, we got Melissa. Get up here, Melissa. Dave's up there. Dave's up there running the camera. Melissa takes got, care of us all the time. Boy, does she ever. <laughs> Sometimes too, too much. <laughs> so what do you think? First half, about what you expected or not? No. <laughs> Everything happened in that first half. But I think when Hugh Freeze told Jenny, they got to get stopped. They keep the crowd in it. They don't want this first drive to be successful at Alabama. Hey, this is a anything-can-happen game here. Right. Jermaine Burton with that long touchdown, the motion man to the top of your screen. Milrow is looking that way, throwing that way, and what complete a, to Nyblack. Amari Nyblack, first down. I mean, you talk about an accurate throw right here. When he steps into it, early in the year, the question was, yeah, Milrow can run the ball and he can throw the bomb, but can he throw this intermediate, intermediate pass? Yeah. That was an 18-yard strike. Absolutely. From the 43, back to Jace McClellan. Nice move outside, dips inside, and he's got 10 more. McClellan, Isaiah Bond got a nice tack, a nice block Talk, out on the outside. Talked about Jaden Roberts, number 77. Watch him pull. He's at right guard, and watch him swallow the right side of that line. Yeah, that's the way you do it. And this time, no holding and a very successful play. So back to back first downs. With Booker in there and Roberts, that's some power inside. Alabama's already moved it into Auburn territory on just a couple of plays, and now here comes Kendrick Law on the end of round. Broke one tackle and knocked out of bounds as he got around the 41-yard line. Let's check in with Jenny. Well, Nick Saban asked his team, what kind of passion do you have? How much do you want to win this game? He said having two touchdowns called back because of penalties absolutely cannot happen. So in the second half, they're looking to stop the run. They want to establish their game plan much better and play a soundment found football. And, of course, this one is so important to get to 11-1. And 8 0 in conference play, and that will set up the big showdown with Georgia next week. And we've got an Auburn player down. It's Kendrick Falk, the freshman, who's been starting in the last couple of weeks for the Tigers. Wow. Numbers galore for those guys. Here, Jalen Milrow leading Alabama today with a good first half passing. 
And this guy's been doing it on the ground, but not this time. Jace McClellan tracked down by Keontae Scott. Sure did time it up perfectly that time and kind of ran him down, outran him, had the speed. This was a previous play before the timeout. He had an important player for this Auburn football team. Keldrick Falk going down and was helped off the field limping. Uh, 6'6", 285-pound freshman that they think is going to be special someday. Let's see if Auburn can get a stop. Third down and three. Milrow. They had him, and they let him get away. And Jalen Milrow, first down. Everyone misjudges his speed. Because of his size, it looks like he's just cruising when he runs. But everyone takes the wrong angle. He gets around him. Wrong angle by McAllister that time. He has, as we've seen many times, this acceleration when he wants it. What did Marcus Harris tell us? He's got the upper body of KJ Jefferson and the lower body of Jaden Daniels, something like that. <laughs> he, he was putting body parts yes, together from did. other quarterbacks. Jalen Milrow just flips this one to Isaiah Bond, and he's got it down to the 16 yard line. Yeah, yeah nice job. Bond. First half trends Jalen 176 yards throwing over 100 of that to Jermaine Burton and Auburn leaning heavily on the run we expected that Gary called that at the beginning of the game and they did a good job of it and quick strikes there we had a couple of touchdowns in about a minute and 54 seconds in the second quarter Roydell Williams he gets stacked up and dropped for a loss Auburn again gambling inside, bringing the safety into the box late. Getting that eighth man into the box. Watch him come late into the box. That means it's man to man to the outside. That's what stops the run. You got one extra guy there. Well, the third downs just keep getting bigger. And that'll be the case through the entire second half. But the Auburn fans know this is a time to come to life here for their defense. Roydell Williams with Milrow. And he's going to toss it to him. Roydell's got the first down and a lot more. Boy, he runs strong, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. They got a great mix between he and McClellan. Roydell, he puts that foot in and he runs behind his shoulder pads and knees. And Ooh. when you tackle him, you feel everything. Yes. Here's what Gary's talking about. Here's the point of impact. Ooh. That's impact. First and goal. Opening drive, third quarter for Alabama from the eight yard line. Roydell Williams again and again, straight up the middle inside the five to about the four. Alabama scored 17 straight quarters. Scored a touchdown the first time they had it today. Now they're trying to do the same here in the third quarter. Look at Jermaine Burton on the outside, the bottom of your screen. Second down and goal. Empty backfield. Jalen Milrose all the way here, and he's dragged down at the line of scrimmage. It didn't seem to be a good design on that play. It just seemed like something was missing in this play. It wasn't a quarterback draw. I don't know if it was the center that didn't get out to help. McLaughlin, but just something didn't work. By the way, Keldrick Falk, who was shaken up a couple of plays ago, is the guy that made the tackle. Chase McClellan in the backfield with Milrow, and that's Isaiah Bond in motion. Third down and goal. Milrow looking to his left, fires to the corner, incomplete intended for Bond, and broken up by D.J. James. It's so tough for those corners and safeties to handle that combination of the outside. And that time, D.J. James did a good job. Watch it. They have to switch. They have to go with their guy. What are they going to do? And a good job. Ball was thrown pretty well. That's about the only spot it could have been thrown. But James with good coverage. So that'll bring out Will Reichard. So take a look at the corner shot. Our AT&T pylon cam. That close to being a touchdown, but it'll force a field goal of 22 yards. 
Trying to add to his point total. Will Riker, more importantly, trying to put his team a little bit further in front, and he does. With 9-12 remaining third quarter, the opening drive for the Tide nets them three more points. 20-14 now, Alabama. Beautiful night in Auburn, Alabama. Crimson Tide's opening drive of the third quarter carries them 70 yards in 12 plays. And settled for a field goal by Will Record of 22 yards. And that draws Will closer to the all-time point total in college football history. And Will's got it teed up. Brian Matee and Jarquez Hunter. Back deep for the Tigers. And they'll bring it out to the 25, and we'll send it down to Jenny Dell. Well, Kool-Aid McKinstry was raised in Birmingham, and like many players on this roster, he grew up watching the Iron Bowl. So I asked for his favorite memory, and he, and he said, I probably shouldn't say this, but it's the kick six. But for Kool-Aid, it was for a special reason, guys. He played football at Pinson Valley High School, where his cornerback's coach was none other than Chris Davis. So Kool-Aid said it was wild to watch as a fan, and then having Davis as a coach made it that much more exciting for him. Boy, no doubt. How about that connection? Really. Kool-Aid, they haven't gone his way too much today. They, a lot of teams don't. This is a keeper by Peyton Thorne. They've got a couple. One of the reasons they don't is because they're completing just under 44% of their passes when they go at them. An All-American and probably a first-round NFL draft choice. Been playing since he showed up in Tuscaloosa as a freshman. Jarquez Hunter now, 80 yards on the day. He's trying to add to that total here, and he got five or six before he's hit over there by Jalen Key. If Auburn had any kind of answer to that last field goal drive, that would keep them right in the thick of this. Well, game. at least they forced a field goal. Right. So they, you know, the, it feels like the next team, I mean, Auburn's got to score next, it feels like to me, to stay in the game. <laughs> Thorn <laughs> throws a slant, got his man on the run, Javarius Johnson. Johnson to cut back to midfield of the 30 or near it. He had the touchdown on the end around, and now he's got a big play as a receiver. Great design of the play, a little bit of motion to stack the release, and then when they stack the release, they get a switch, and he gets inside on the safety, Caleb Downs, and that's what gets it. 37-yard pickup. Nice design. 31. Little wrinkles, just little teeny wrinkles work. And now Robbie Ashford's in a quarterback, and we know what kind of wheels he has. But he will keep it, almost lost the ball. And he's still trying to dive forward. Didn't think he went down. He thinks his knees or elbows didn't touch. Chris Braswell made the tackle. I'll take another look. I did hear the whistle, though. And he might have had a point. It looked yeah. like he was, his I, rear end was it, on it Braswell. It also might have been a face mask. So right there, it's possible he didn't go down, but Braswell was bringing him down. Peyton Thorne checks back in. The crowd boos after watching the replay. And it's second down and six. Auburn with a good drive going courtesy of that Javarius Johnson reception from Thorne and now they run out of time and have to take a timeout. Yeah, they're more expensive in the second half than they are in the first half when you burn those timeouts. And Coach Freeze upsets that's a vital timeout. One more look at that Robbie Ashford run. Gene Steratore is with us. 
Robert really saying close he wasn't right down. here, Brad, as to whether that, you know, his backside touches at that point. I know the coach is frustrated with it, but look, once you're ruled down in that situation, even calling a timeout and requesting a view is not possible. It's just not reviewable at that point. All right, Gene, thanks. Second and six. Peyton Thorne's got a man wide open. And a walk-in touchdown for Javarius Johnson. There's busted coverages, and then there's busted coverages. This time, just a small rub. He did not knock him. When he comes in motion, watch a small rub right here. Doesn't touch him, and then everybody freezes. Didn't even need to pick him on the play. That is a busted cover. Alex McPherson in for the point after. I'll take your busted coverage and raise your one. <laughs> Holy cow. They try to give Auburn the lead here. Past the midway point of the third quarter. It's up. It's good. Peyton Thorne first went to Javarius Johnson. A 37-yard pickup to get it to the 31-yard line. And then a couple plays later, wide open from 27 yards out. Javarius Johnson and Peyton Thorne and the Tigers in front. This Friday in primetime, Liberty and New Mexico State meet in the Conference USA Championship. Find out who will bring home the hardware on CBS Sports Network. Last year, New Mexico State beat Liberty, then coached by Hugh Freeze. They did it again last week, but this is a different Auburn team. This is the Iron Bowl, and they have the lead on eighth-ranked Alabama. It's all we can ask for in our final trip to Jordan-Hare. you got to admit, weird things happen in this game. You got right? that right. And the kickoff into the end zone. They'll bring it out to the 25. And for Alabama, this place has been at many times a house of horrors. Ten years ago, the kick six. As time expired, Chris Davis took it the distance. Tigers jump past the tide, score the final 16 points. 26-14, that was in 2017. Two years ago, we're here. Alabama had to go to four overtimes to get the win here. And the 19 game was Bo Nix. Remember that? Mac Jones in that game? Yep. Tool was hurt. So many great games, and we're right in the thick of another one. Jayla Milrow, double clutch. And now he's going to keep it. And he's going to get a first down and quite a bit more. Did he step out of bounds? I don't think so. Nope. A huge run by Jalen Milrow. You have to have somebody that is ready for this play if you're Auburn. When he breaks containment, uh, you know, we talked about it. Bo Nix, Jaden Daniels, he's right in that area the way he can run the ball. Boy, what a tightrope job to pick up 37 yards to the 38. Milro, little short crossing route to Isaiah Bond, and Bond's got another Bama first down. The biggest run of the day by number four, and then just a little dump pass over the middle to pick up another first down. And yeah. Aria's going, this is, a, this is a good game. Exactly. Keep used to it. But, but a little dump pass accurately. Bond didn't even have to slow down. He's gotten so much better. Jalen Milrow is on those short passes. Give it to your athletes and let them keep running. They got it all ready to the 22-yard line here as we wind toward the five-minute mark. And Milrow keeps it. Try to get a block from Dupree. His tight end did get a little piece of one. And got it down to the 18-yard line. And Vesco brings you today's scholar athletes for Alabama, James Brockemeyer and Tyler Fromm from Auburn. And Vesco proud to support student athletes on and off the field with a donation to both Alabama and Auburn's general scholarship funds. Tyler Fromm, one of their tight ends, Jake Fromm's younger brother and one of the seniors honored today here at Jordan Hare. Final home game for him. Yeah, Kendrick Law back in the game. He is their wild card player, like a Dylan Bell type player that Georgia uses him. McClellan. Tried a little fake move to the outside. Did pick up about three. 
on Stout well, though. That's about as good a defense you can play on these days on those type of plays that are going every which direction. I'm pretty sure if you'd ask Hugh Freeze, you want a one-point lead with 4.20 to go in the third quarter, he would say, indeed I do. Third down at three. The first downs at the 12-yard line. Bond in motion. Bad snap or a snap that it was unexpected anyway. Jalen Milrow is going to try to turn it into a first down, and he will. And a head-to-head -head collision there at the eight by Nehemiah Pritchett. And let's see what the flag's about. Two flags came flying in in a hurry. Was it a push in the back upon a block? It looked like a clean tackle. There you run. Personal, Personal foul. foul. Illegal blindside block. No blindside. Yes. Third down. And you've got to be in the vision of the defensive player. And this one comes from the side. It is a correct call. I did not get the number, Gary, so... I thought it was oh, 19. It 19, yes, Kendrick Law. Yep. So that changes things. The crowd knows it. No row. Taking his time. Down the middle. Incomplete. Broken up by D.J. James again. So the penalty on the blindside block, which was really not necessary. Obviously, you play aggressive football and you want to block, and it happens. But this time, the corners. DJ James makes another play. Remember in the end zone, he did it last time yep. to force the field goal. Makes another big play. Malik Benson was the intended receiver. And now it brings up Will Reichard. Makes it a little bit more difficult field goal. This will be a 42-yard attempt to make him the all-time leading scorer in college football. Uh -oh. And it's wide right. No good. Yeah. Uh, everybody here believes now that it's a game. been first and goal comes back and then they miss the field goal and Mr. Dependable for his entire career for Alabama not this time says Jalen Simpson and a drive that comes up empty when number four would have had it first and goal and the word of the week for Auburn believe they believe well, the Tigers take over at the 24 here's Damari Alston, short gain, little pushing and shoving going on at the end of the play. A little frustration on Alabama's part that they're trailing and that they just missed an opportunity to take the lead. Justin, avoid you be just cleaned that up real quick. We said we don't need a penalty yeah. right now. That's for sure. He pushed Terry and Ardell out of there. It's a no. Austin flanks Peyton Thorne, now switches sides in the Tiger backfield on second down and seven. And Peyton Thorne's going to keep it big opening for the quarterback. Out across the 40 to first down, Auburn. Harry and Arnold stopped him, but not before he got 14 yards. Called it a big opening, and it was. I'll tell you, Gunner Britton, number 53, just turned his man three yards out of the way. What a block. Everybody catching their breath a little bit. Avery Jones in there at center. He and Connor Lou have been rotating. Avery started the first six games, got injured. Connor Lou, the freshman, went in to get a good job, but Jones is in there now. Tigers stay with two tight ends on first down from the 41. Thorne throws going to his left. He somehow got it to Javarius Johnson again. 
So Peyton Thorne, who started this year under so much criticism by the Auburn fans, watch this play. This is an athletic play. He's in trouble. He fakes it, gets around, resets his feet, and makes the throw. Now they go back to the ground, and it's Austin again. He's got a first down. He always got to be ready for the hurry up with Auburn and Hugh Freeze. He believes it's a big advantage against this Alabama defense. Not letting the tide substitute. Brian Petit in the game. We haven't seen much of him. Only on kick return. Yes. First down in Alabama territory for the Tigers from the 48. And it's Thorne keeping again. And he got about three. And we're going to work our way under a minute here in the third quarter. Second down and eight from the 45. Thorne again. Yeah. Tough run. He didn't Absolutely. get the first down, but he's close. Playing like a single wing quarterback. Playing it all on the line right here. The transfer from Michigan State. Takes it. He knows he's going to get a hit and does a good positive play. Third and a yard. And Alston's got it. And then some. That should bring our quarter to a close, unless Auburn hurries here for one more play. Just wondering about this Auburn backfield, though. We did not see Dark Chris Hunter on that, and in a little different rotation. I wonder if he's been nicked. Believe Auburn fans do. Alabama fans are hoping that's not the case, or it could be a spoiled season with the SEC title on the line next week in Atlanta. 88th Iron Bowl. We got all we wanted and then some. Let me show you. The SEC on CBS heads into the fourth and final quarter. An unbelievable scene at Jordan Haird in the last couple of minutes while we were away. Meanwhile, the offense for Auburn at the Alabama 36 to start the fourth quarter. And it's Thorne again. Thorne picked up about four. Jenny talked with Hugh Freeze during that timeout. Coach, the Iron Bowl is known to have some crazy endings. How do you finish the fight here? Well, we got it to the fourth. That was our first goal. And now look at the, the crowd will be our 12th man here for sure. And, um, I'm proud of our kids. We need to finish this drive and get some points here. We noticed Hunter's been missing out there. What's his status? He's banged up a little bit, but uh, I think he'll go if we need him to. But Damari's running, running strong, too. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Damari for a couple more. He's going to bring up a third down and four. Yeah, big tackle that time. Jalen Key, he had to make that tackle, but that would have been an easy first down. And Jarquez Hunter right on cue, according to Coach, Coach Freeze, if we need him. I think he's ready to go. Robbie Ashford will take over here. If I was calling plays here, I'd be thinking I've got two chances to make a first down. And it's Ashford on the end around on the pitch from Hunter. And he didn't get there. Good defense again. Campbell that time. Inside linebacker ran that play down. Had Campbell. Watch him run this one down. So boom. Hunter in nice the Wildcat play. and pitches it to Ashford. So a little different look there, but they didn't get the first. And it's fourth down and two. Not going for the field goal. Biggest play of the ball game is at hand. And Peyton Thorne's in the shot. Oh, they might have got him. Free play. It's going to the corner. McKinstry covering incomplete. I don't know if they were going to snap the ball. They might have just been trying to draw him off sides and take a timeout. But the shift by Auburn yep, got made him. them look like it was a false start. So let's straighten it all out here. Boy, this would be something if they just call this no, just a play. Alabama jumps. 
Auburn believes they've got a free play, did they? Let's take another look at it. First of all, it's the two tight ends that move on the left side right there for Auburn. Yeah, I thought he snapped it when they were in the neutral zone. And here's the call. Offside. So Nick is saying three people were moving at the same time. Watch it. Motion comes across, then the shift. And when the neutral zone, that's when it snaps. So who's it on? Is it on the offense or the guys in the neutral zone? They call it on Alabama, and that's an automatic first down. We just said, you got it wrong. I think Gene would help us clear that up. Now we got Robbie Ashford back in a quarterback. We can maybe get to Gene after this play, but it's first down. And Ashford, it's a run all the way to the left side, trying to get wide, and oh, blown up by... Yeah, the leading tackler, Caleb Downs, the true freshman. Watch him come up, take on the blocker bounces it out takes out two players wow. and then makes the tackle he came in with 90 tackles on the year he's obviously going to be a freshman all-american and what a future he's got in the alabama secondary and now back to peyton thorne and jarquez hunter the tailback and he'll flush out of the backfield hunter that is empty set peyton thorne quarterback draw all the way and Thorne inside the 20, the 10. First and goal, Otter. Everybody knows Alabama loves to run their combos over here. Watch Deontay. He's turning out. He's turning his head away. Everybody splits. They're running their combos. Three on two, four on three. A quarterback draw is the perfect call. And a 22-yard pickup for Peyton Thorne. And now with some key runs. As Auburn, first and goal, adding, looking to add to a one-point lead. From the eight-yard line. And driving down to the five is Hunter. And remember, this Auburn defense forced a field goal the last time Alabama was down there. This Alabama defense needs to hold them. Darquez Hunter on that carry to the five-yard line. Where... Boy, the three-headed monster, the two tailbacks and the quarterback running the ball. Over 200, what, 49 yards rushing already in this game. Second and goal at the five. Hunter rejoins Thorne in the backfield. Peyton's going to throw to the end zone. Off Javarius Johnson's hands, incomplete. And Caleb Downs was covering. Third and goal. Alabama, when you're out there playing man-to-man, -man, keep fighting. Stay inside. Turn your head. Beautiful coverage. It seems like Auburn's had this drive going forever. It has 15th place hey, coming up. Yes. Just three passes for nine yards. It's been all run. There's the ground game for the Tigers, including number one, Peyton Thorne. And he's under center here on third and goal. Straight run ahead for Jarquez. And what a stop by that Alabama defense. They answered the ball. Ball came out at the end. Yep. He was already down. He got it to the three. One point lead. You've got to take the field goal here now. you got to come away with points. Just as Hugh told Jenny at the end of the third quarter, we got to have points. You gave it your best shot, but that Alabama defense stood strong. That'll bring out Alex McPherson, who hasn't missed a field goal this year. And this will be from 21 yards out. To give the Tigers a four-point lead. It's up. It's good. Auburn fans holding on, hoping for an upset. 
IHG Hotel and Resorts game recap. Auburn leads 24 to 20. Trying to spoil Alabama's season. And we still got a long ways to go. We expected a good one. We got it, partner. You know, I, I just going through my head right here in Vern's last year in the Tennessee <laughs> game. He said, boy, I'm really going to miss this. I'm beginning to feel he's <laughs> understand what he was talking about. This is something right here. I think the last team that's got the ball might end up winning the ball game. Absolutely. We'll have to wait and see. Whoa, a lot of action. 10-15, still remaining. We've had long runs, busted coverages, close plays, replays, everything. McPherson's kick. Will go into the end zone. Alabama will have it at the 25-yard line after we check in. Adam Zucker in our New York studio with a Jeep update. Zuck. Well, Ness, it's tight games for top 10 teams everywhere today. In the Apple Cup, Cam Ward connects with Kyle Williams and Wazoo and number four undefeated Washington are tied at 14. And we're standing here in the studio watching you guys, too. <laughs> yeah, don't go away. We got a lot of ball left here on the plains of Auburn. Let's see if Alabama can establish their running game here. They got Roy Dell Williams in there with Jalen Milrow. And Kendrick Law on a wing to the left. Jalen Milrow pulls it out, looking to throw. And goes down. Gene Asante. They wanted to get the ball to Kendrick Law, slipping him out into the flat. Watch Law go there, covered. Nowhere to go. Tries to fake it, stays with it, and makes the play. We talked to Eugene Asante yesterday. Played at North Carolina, and he said, I just had to try this. He's, He's done a pretty good job of it. really has. Watching these games on TV, he said, I had to give this a try. This being the SEC. Second down and 10. Blitz off the corner. Milrow going to air it out. Deep ball. Overshot everybody. Incomplete. And it was Nyblack, the intended receiver. And Robbie Utes open over the middle of the formation for a short throw, but he wanted to go deep, and this time the safety was in the proper spot. Watch over the middle, number 45, right there. That's a nice little second down play. Now third down and 10. Key to the game, Auburn felt, when it gets into third and long, can they get off the field? Will they spy Jalen Milrow? Milrow, far side. Burton, did he catch it? He did. I'm not sure I got his foot down, but he did. Well, uh -oh. maybe not. Uh-oh. They're talking. We might have one official overrule the other. It's going to see where his left foot is. That's the one that comes down first. Nehemiah Pritchett was in the coverage. This one might give us our best angle. Oh, boy. Wow, his foot went just on the line. They're calling it, or did he get it to come backwards on the grass? I think he's in. I, well, I thought it was a catch, too. Obviously, it's going to be reviewed. Happened right in front of the head coach. Called a completion, obviously, on the field because it's fourth down. Alabama has their punt team in, but I think it's got it inside. I don't think his toe's on the white, do you? I don't either. Right there, it doesn't, it's still green looking. It, it, the way he was floating, I thought he was going to float out of bounds, but he actually brought it almost backwards. I thought he was going to float all the way to Hoover, Alabama. <laughs> but that looks like he's in to me. Gene Steratore, what do you think? You know, I'm with you, Brad. I think there's a slice of green there, personally. Now, I understand that after a discussion they ruled incomplete. I truthfully think uh, and feel that there is a slice of green there between that left toe and the out-of-bounds white, fellas. At that point, it's just amazing that he got his leg back. To is, find is out. there something buried weird under the state or the stadium here? Because <laughs> like everything happens here. <laughs>
It's on that far sideline when we had the extra one second. Uh, I know. We blew this up once already. All right. And you can see when his right foot comes down, that's how long a stride he had going. Yep. But that one still looks like, as Gene would call it, a slice of green, a hint of mint. I think there is the replay official wondering if it scraped the edge of the white and then landed in the green. Stan Murray is our replay official. He's, he's taking his time. Well, that's an all important call. Well, of here. course, when you're punting with 920 to go, yeah. you know. You know, everybody's sitting on pins and needles here at Jordan Hare, including us. Jermaine Burton thinks he was in. And finally, we get the call, an all important one. After video review, the ruling on the field stands. Incomplete pass. So we're not right. Well, I, I don't know. <laughs> well, it might be the official, <laughs> the replay official felt there, to him there wasn't enough to overturn. I think if he would have been called by the officials on the field as a completion, he wouldn't overturn that either. And not only that, one official did call it a yes, catch, and, and the other it, one came sprinting the, down on the sideline. So we had two officials on the field that disagreed and so the same officials the Auburn fans were booing now love those guys right? uh -huh, Exactly James Burnup to punt Beauty. Conte Scott backpedals takes around the 18 yard line Reverses his field trying to get away not going to get away from that one as he's bulldogged down and now we're going to have a few more pushes, shoves, officials in the middle, flags are flying everywhere. Juan Darius Robinson is the guy that made the tackle, maybe didn't have to lift the return man up. I don't know what they're going to call here. I'm staying out of this. <laughs> and another discussion will be going on. Yeah, the Auburn player late tried to stand up, and there happened to be an Alabama player on his back. And that's what the officials saw from afar. The tackle seemed okay. Fight, they're fo fighting, they're both fighting. I felt that was legitimate. But right at the end, when he tries to get up, then he flips him. There is no foul in the play. The result is first down for I Auburn. think that's a good no call. Yeah, away from the play. Yeah. Burnham got buried. Stuff happening everywhere. Back to the penalty that wasn't. Yeah, here's the one that they call originally. When Scott tries to get up, he flips him. That's the call. Then they start to get together, the officials, and have a huddle and say, he was just trying to get up. He didn't know anybody was on him. But away from the play, the hit on the punter, that could have been called. So it's a blindside hit. Yes. And the referee finally got those two separated. Burnham said, uh, how about a flag? So no flags in either after it was picked up. First down from the 22. Jarquez Hunter is the Auburn tailback. And he is the ball carrier, looking for blocks in front. Got about four. We're under nine minutes. Pressures on this Alabama defense. They've got to stop the run game. I mean, came in talking about it that Auburn had to run it. They've run it over 250 yards. Auburn had that kind of day against Georgia when they were very much in a ball game that they could have won. Peyton Thorne. From the shotgun, quarterback, quarterback draw. draw. And he's got another first down, took a big hit at the sideline. And the Auburn bench looking for a flag there and don't get it. Yeah, Jalen Key got the hit right at the end, but Peyton Thorne, who was supposed to be the non-athletic running, a passing quarterback, again shows it. The running game and that sideline for Alabama, excuse me, for Auburn says, could that have been targeting on the play? Jalen Key is the guy. Yes, you can see it. They're 
They're trying to say targeting. Meanwhile, the Auburn offense keeps going. And Thorne, the carrier this time. Tim Smith's got him wrapped up. Maybe a yard. And now every snap now is getting yep. a little bit chipped. That's how much this game means to everybody. A lot riding on this right now in this fourth quarter. The previous play we're looking at again. And... There's the side of the helmet to the helmet. And Gene, no targeting, right? No, 100%, Gary. Side of the helmet, not crown of the helmet. And you made a great point, too. Look, this is where the officials need to understand every play. Come in quickly, kill the play. A lot of whistles, break players up, and let this game finish as great as it's playing. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Thorne rips it down the middle. And he, did he tuck it in there? No, nope. incomplete. Nope. And that was Fairweather, his favorite receiver, and he took a big shot. Well, this was good Alabama pass defense this time. Forced the ball inside, and everybody closes on it cleanly. Arnold comes across from one side, Campbell from the other. And Campbell, the one that got him right in the midsection, and Fairweather still trying to catch his breath. Third and nine. Thorne in trouble, and he's going to go down. Alabama got to him. Braswell is there. Nice stunt this time by this Alabama pass rush. Braswell starts outside. Watch him come around and in. Outside, that's beautiful. That's the way you set up that pass rush for Dallas Turner. And then Braswell and Turner clean it up. They have done so many times. Meet at the quarterback, 41 and 15. And they did it again. And they force the Oscar Chapman punt. Caleb Downs has to backpedal. Way back at the 15, trying to get away and can't. Nice coverage by Auburn. Boy, that was a low line drive, but it was deep enough that uh, the coverage was good enough. So here we go. A little over six minutes left. Alabama's got all its timeouts. They got to go to the length of the field. They need a touchdown, trailing by four. Well, Jenny talked about it about three hours ago. Not too many coaches have the opportunity or the coaching prowess, I guess, to beat Nick Saban twice at Ole Miss. Hugh Freeze did it. And he's on the verge in his first year with the Tigers. There's the other guys that joined the group. Gus and Les, Urban Meyer and Dabo. Right now, Hugh Freeze could add to that number if his defense can hold on for 6-19. But Alabama's offense has different ideas from their own 18-yard line. Jalen Milrow, quick throw to the sideline. Short game for Isaiah Bond. He maybe got three yards out of it after spinning away from the tackle. So if you're Nick Saban, you've got to conserve your timeouts in case you have to punt. So you'd use your three timeouts. But you've got to continue to watch that clock because if it gets down much lower, you might not even get the ball back. Three of his 18 fourth quarter comebacks as a coach have come against Auburn. He's going to need one more to preserve an opportunity to think about college football playoff and all the rest. Little delay by Jace McClellan, then straight ahead. It'll bring up third down at about four. We talked about it many times. Do you put a spy on Jalen Miller? He's been hurting you on these third down runs. Do you force him to beat you with his arm? He looks calm. We'll see if he still is on this third down snap. There's the spy. Milrow can't get away and throws it out of bounds. Austin Keys, number six, was spying, had the perfect defense on. Here he is right here. Watch him. He floods in and he looks and he looks and he forces him out. Jalen wanted to go that way. Nowhere to go. Jalen McLeod got the shoestring tackle as he was going down. Good defensive call that time by Ron Roberts. 
So that means punting time for James Burnham. Coy Moore this time is back deep. Burnham's kick. Moore camps up. Fell down to the ball. Yeah. Is out. Picked up. Can't run it. It'd be a muff. It's Jihad Campbell who scored on a fumble return the last time we had these guys. And this is going to be Alabama's ball. A slip. The Auburn player slips on the return. This is Coy Moore. Even though it's zero, it's not Keontae Smith. And when he hit the turf, the ball came out. Yep. Ruth on the field as the punt was first touched by the receiving team, recovered by the kicking team. By rule, it's dead when recovered by the kicking team. First down, Alabama at that spot. Hey. How many things can happen in a football game? How many things can happen on this field? Crazy. That's the luck right there. Remember two years ago, Alabama had to come back. Their offense was sputtering. Bryce Young was being harassed all day long by the Tiger defense. And then he put together one more magical drive. 12 plays, 97 yards. He had been sacked seven times prior to that drive. And it ended up going four overtimes for an Alabama win. Now they've got 448. Good field position. Jalen Milrow, there's some grass in front of him. Milrow this time will keep it. Looking for a block and steps out of bounds even without the block with a first down. Watch Kendrick Law on the right side of the screen. He was afraid he'd get a blindside block, so he doesn't throw it this time. Good, smart play. Larry Nixon was the guy that ran Milrow out of bounds, but not before he got 10. In the red zone. Jason McClellan back in at tailback. He gets the carry and he's going down for a loss on the plates. Jalen McLeod again. Jalen McLeod, outside linebacker, kind of a nickel back type player, just times it out perfectly. Transferred from Appalachian State to the SEC and has had a really, really fine season. Roydell Williams comes in, McClellan goes out. Well, do you find Burton, Jermaine Burton? He's right here. Milrow on second and 11. In trouble, and down he goes. And it's Marcus Harris. Senior day, the senior makes a big play. The transfer from Kansas. He went there because Les Miles said he was going to turn the program around, but he ended up back home, and he makes a huge play. His seventh sack of the year, but none bigger than that one. Loss of nine. Third and 20. Milrow, again in trouble, dances away, trying to turn on the Jets. He does, and hit right at the first down marker. It's going to be fourth and just under a yard. And Nehemiah Pritchett maybe got the worst of that one. This time, no, well, there was a spy. He went the other way, ran away from it. This time, Austin Keys could not get there, even though they had the same defense on. Now, the point is, where did they mark him down? It's just a foot shy, maybe? From or a, maybe a yard before the ball lands, but here's the collision with Pritchett. And it's side helmet to side helmet. And it was a legit hit. As you said, he might have got the worst of it. Not a defenseless player when he's running the ball, though. Here's what it looked like in regular speed in the collision at the end of a 19-yard run. Oof. Fourth down, Alabama with 2.38 to go when we come back. All right. Don't forget, before we're done, it's the play of the game presented by Jersey Mike Subs. We got about 50 to choose from. 
One more look, not a defenseless player, side of the shoulder pad and the side of the helmet, obviously not targeting. Who carries the ball here? Milrow, Roydell Williams, who's been a ton. Re and remember one more thing, Nick Saban told us the most improved part of his football team has been that offensive line. And Kay and Lee has come in and take that spot for the injured Auburn corner. Alabama needs that offensive line to come through for them. They don't go on fourth down often. They have to go on fourth down here. Going to be a tied push, it looks like. Unless they can draw them offside. Milrow trying to be heard with his front wall. And they're going to toss it to Williams. Rodell Williams has got a first down. Very clever play by Alabama. Well thought out, obviously practiced. They kind of lulled Auburn into thinking that they might call timeout or try to draw them off sides, and then they run the play. And executed well when you think that that toss pitch has got to be perfect, you Absolutely. know, and it was. Well, but, I mean, that, that is a, had a long huddle. They fought it over. They took their time. They had their, everybody on Auburn in their stance for 20 seconds, and then they run it. Jalen McLeod is the guy that's shaken up for Auburn. We'll be right back. Alabama first and goal just outside the Auburn seven-yard line. They need a touchdown to take the lead. Roydell Williams in the backfield with Jalen Miro. He's the one that got him the first down outside the seven. He'll try it again, and this time back to the line of scrimmage if he's lucky. Oh, I'm surprised that Hugh Freeze used his timeout with no gain. Now, I thought if they gained four or five yards, he would almost think they're going to score. But with that stop right there, I think I would have waited one more play. So 143 remaining as we take a look at our four game changer today. And a guy that had not carried the ball all year, Javarius Johnson on an end around, gave Auburn the lead, and, and then a 33-yard strike here. And finally, Peyton Thorne to a wide open Javarius Johnson for the touchdown. He just kept getting more and more open. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. So Auburn's down to one timeout. First time in a long time an Auburn players had a rushing and receiving touchdown in the Iron Bowl. Back to the live action. Second and goal, Alabama. Good news for Auburn. McLeod is back in the football game. Jermaine Burton in motion. And a bad snap or... Milrow wasn't ready for it. He goes way down at the 26-yard line. The, the problem that's been there all year for this Alabama team. A loss of 18. Yeah, he was not expecting it, and it was not accurate. A double whammy on the play. Look at this. No one else moves. Ball was low and away, and you're right. Milrow was not as expecting it. He was still looking. And then he slipped. Try to pick it up. Third down and goal, but it's nowhere near the goal right now. We're down to a minute from the 26. Just a three-man rush for Auburn. Milrow dancing around, pointing to his receivers. Now he's got to run unless he backpedals behind the line. He might have gotten there, and the throw is broken up. Incomplete. I think he went across the line and came back, and it's going to be a penalty. And he was across the line. Loss of down. Alabama has all three timeouts. They could kick a field goal here. The referee coming over to explain things to Nick Saban.
Either way, it's fourth down. The quarterback, the quarterback went beyond the line of scrimmage. Illegal forward pass. Offense number four. The penalty is five yards from the previous spot with a loss of down. Alabama has elected to use a timeout to avoid the 10-second runoff. Fourth down. Well, Alabama took a timeout because they didn't want a 10-second runoff after the penalty. It got down after they made the first down, and it was a series of mistakes for the Alabama offense. As Gary said, they could choose a field goal and then try an onside kick. Otherwise, it's fourth and goal from the 31 yard line. Coming up on the U.S. Army post game show, Adam Rick and BJ will try to straighten this thing out and all the other highlights from today and the impact on the college football playoff. That's all coming up on the U.S. Army post game show. And obviously, this game has a gigantic impact on the college football playoff because if Alabama doesn't win, they'd have two losses. And even if they beat Georgia next week, their chances of a playoff are very slim. Well, Amari Nyblack, number 84. The tight end is the tallest receiver for a jump ball type play. So three receivers to the left and two to the right. Last time they only rushed three players and Jalen Milrow had all day. Now Auburn took the timeout. Hugh Freeze wanted to see what kind of lineup was going to be out there offensively for Alabama. And so we have another Short timeout right here. Huge consequences for Alabama to lose this game. They've won three straights. Auburn has lost 10 straight against ranked teams. And as I just mentioned, there's never been a two loss team to make the playoff. So regardless of what happens next Saturday in Atlanta between Alabama and Georgia, if they don't win this, it's going to feel like a lost season for Tide fans, whether you're 10 and 2 or 11 and 2, if you don't make the final four. Here we go. Fourth and goal. Might only be a two man rush this time. That's all it is. But there's a lot of airspace to cover for Milro. Still looking. Firing. Near corner. It's caught. Touchdown, Alabama. Isaiah Bond. On a fourth and a mile. Thirty-one yards. Touchdown tied. We always keep thinking we've seen it all, and we never have, have we? Bond, Isaiah Bond. Unbelievable. Clearly had it. One on one to the outside. DJ James is there. Yes, a little shove, but in that situation on fourth down, they're going to let him pan fight in the end zone. Total shock on the fans' faces at Jordan Hare. And Alabama with a point after coming up. Auburn's out of timeouts. They would be down a field goal, so it's not over yet. I mean, they took a timeout. They had the defense they wanted out there, but to allow the quarterback to just stand there for 10 seconds, you got to wonder sometimes, right? Extra point by Will Record. Up and good. DJ James had a 20 yard cushion on the play, and he got beat deep. He lines up. There's the cushion. There's another guy back here. And he's still completed.
If this lead holds up on the 10th year anniversary of the kick six, we're going to have the 30 yard corner to Bond. James Bond, Isaiah Bond. And, rem <laughs> and remember, in college football, you could take an interference there if you were in trouble. Right. What a finish again. That tells it all right there. And on the other side, Mr. Bond, we have a dinner reservation for you in Tuscaloosa. But it's not over. The drop punt, the fourth down they make it, the bad snap, everything happened, and they still, Alabama pulls and it for a touchdown to take the lead. And Brian Petit is going to bring this out and hoping to make a play, but he's not going to. He won't get to the 15-yard line. Now you got to be careful of penalties. You don't want a fight to start here, and one has. Remember, anything that happens in this game, a fight, you're out the first half of the SEC championship game if you're for Alabama. And not only that, it looks like a couple of people are coming out of there with possible injuries. Mike O'Reilly came out holding his elbow. So that play took it down to 26 seconds. Here they make the hit on Batte. And whistle should have stopped play right there. He wasn't going. It, it, it might have. They might have been blowing the whistle. It's hard to tell. Yes. We can't hear it up here. Kendrick Law was in the thick of things. I'm not sure he didn't throw a punch or two, but they're trying to sort everything out. 26 seconds for Auburn. No and Auburn, timeouts. And Auburn needs at least 50 yards to get in the field goal range. Alex McPherson's career long is 53. I'm not saying it can't happen. I'll I'm tell not you that either. Right not now. in this place. No. Tied with a three-man rush. Peyton Thorne. Ball is out in the end zone. Picked up by Auburn, but it ended up being a safety. The ball is still out, squirting around. Clock is running. Peyton Thorne got nailed, and the ball came out. They might get one more play if they can get everybody regrouped, but they might not. The receivers try to get back to the line of scrimmage, which is the one-yard line with one second to go. Thorne lofts one out. It is intercepted. Terry and Donald will end it for the Tide, maybe with a touchdown. The craziest, most unbelievable final 40 seconds of football that maybe you'll ever see unless you've been to the Iron Bowl before. That's exactly right. Just put another chapter into this game. A walk-off pick six by Terry Nottle will change the score. It will not look like what this game has been about for three and a half hours. And actually, it's exactly what everything looked at, like for the last three and a half hours. It's been a little bit of everything. I mean, the score was a lot yes, closer. Yes, I know. I mean. I mean, it's just, I mean, everything happened in this football game, including the last play a pick six. And the sideline of Alabama, as you might expect, all their hopes and dreams are still alive. Jenny's with the winning coach. All right, coach, how did you draw off that last play to survive this one? Believe it or not, we work on that. But it was just a great throw by Jalen and a great catch by Isaiah. I mean, we work on it, but, you know, you're throwing it up for grabs, really. We came down with it. You know, there's been some weird stuff happened here, and this is the first time I can remember it going in our favor. <laughs> what does this team need to grasp as you prepare for what's coming next week? Well, you know, I've always had a theory when you don't play well and you win, that might not be a good thing. So we, we, we got we, we, we to look at our resolve a little bit. We didn't play very well in defense tonight. We got a great start, got too many penalties. So there's a lot of good things to take from this. It's a great win for our team. It's a great win for our state. It's a great win for our fans. But for next week, we got to do better. Congratulations, Coach.
Jalen, how were you able to stay so calm in the pocket as you led this team to victory? Never give up. Always fall back to your level of training. It's all about, it talks about all about mental toughness. That's what's going to get you through a game. Not one quarter, two quarter, three quarters. It's going to take all 60 minutes. And that's exactly what it took place. What was going through your mind on that last touchdown pass? Finish. All about finishing. That's all it was about. Finishing, executing the play. What is it about the Iron Bowl that just creates these epic moments? If you, if you look around, that's exactly what it is right there. The atmosphere, just the, how tense everyone is. Um, it's everything that comes with it. Congratulations on the victory. Roll Tide! <laughs> Jalen's been using that mantra all season long, finish. But how could we have ever dreamed that would be the finish? It felt like both teams were going to give the game away. <laughs> and it ended up back in Alabama's lap. Wow. Well, whew. time for the play of the game. Presented by Jersey Mike Subs. Here's how it sounded, I guess. But there's a lot of airspace to cover for Milrow. Still looking, firing, near corner. It's caught! Touchdown, Alabama! Isaiah Bond on a fourth and a mile! And there's your game winner. 31 yards, touchdown, tied. <laughs> well, that'll wrap it up. Whew. We've seen a lot of these, but you they know, just keep getting better. We Gary. won't be here in a couple of years, but I'm going to watch it on TV. If it's, I think, uh, <laughs> you got to catch what's going to happen next time. Oh, my goodness. Obviously, a lot of tears on the plains. There's joy in Tuscaloosa. The tide will go into Atlanta against Georgia with a chance for a college football playoff. And we should have a dandy next week. That's going to wrap it up for Gary Danielson, Jenny Dale, Gene Steratore, our entire crew on CBS. Brad Nessler saying so long from the Plains. Unbelievably, the final score, by the way, they took away that interception for a touchdown. Final score, we understand, is 27 to 24. What a game. We'll send you back to Adam Zucker and company for the U.S. Army postgame show right after these messages. Good night from Auburn.